This question is for you, Matthew, actually. Uh, you had mentioned relationships as being a key pillar in your career. Going back to mentorship and confidence and the support around us, can you speak to the importance of relationships specifically for women and your female colleagues and how that has helped them uh, move forward and up in their careers? Oh, absolutely. The fundamental foundation of a relationship, I think, especially I'm focusing obviously from a work perspective, is um, you know being able to deliver, right? If you show value in what you're doing, right? And you form that foundation, you form that trust early on, and you build on that as you go along. So I always say, focus on what you bring to the table. And it could be in so many different facets, right? But focus on that first and everything else will fall in place. People will recognize value when you bring it to the table. And, you know, Simone, you were talking about what uh, employees can do. The number of um, women who do not get promoted in the entry level to manager level positions is extremely low. That's where we really need to start focusing, right? Because if we don't, if we don't push that the number of women up the management leadership path, and we stop it so early, it doesn't give us, give us that ability to just focus on the you know senior level management or C levels. We really need to focus on the lower level managers and give that mentorship program, build that confidence and building that relationship early on in their career. Thank you, Matthew. And, and I think that's a really smart point. On that note, I really wanna talk about the next generation. Uh, we have obviously in the last century, uh, seen women in the workforce and become C-suite as on this panel. Uh, but I really want to understand what would make the next generation uh, interested in entering STEM and interested in being at a leadership role. It's not for the money. It's not necessarily for the title, but it's for the passion of the work. That's a really interesting question um, because obviously in IT and I also run a, a PMO, it's it's very far and few between when um, I'm trying to recruit or hire to get young women into the recruiting pool. And it starts with where did, where did they get interested or not interested? And that is uh, a question I, I think about every day, but I think the first part, and I, I do have a daughter who right now is a junior in high school and she doesn't exactly know what she wants to do. My son is an engineer and he's in college, but how how would I entice her to take an interest in anything STEM? And I think it's experience and exposure. How do they get the experience and exposure? And it's not just from mom, it is from others who they might listen to a little bit more, especially in the teen years. Um, how do I introduce or influence from the outside to that young person and and um, what kind of experience they could have or that it is fun or that it is something that they want, might want to pursue? Um, those are the things I think about. How do I, how do I do that or how do I have an army of people that um, would want to go out into the community or go out into the schools or go out and and in leadership roles or not, but in STEM, how do you get that exposure and offer the experience that this is kind of fun, give it a try. It doesn't hurt to try, just give it a try. And it, it could be something different, so. Thank you. And Simona, I want to turn it over to you, more or less the same question. We're seeing Time Magazine awarding uh, kids like Gitanjali Rao, the kid of the year, uh, for her extraordinary efforts. We're seeing the media start to embrace women in STEM. We're starting to see that pick up. It is amazing and startling to me that in 2020, we are having this panel. We are having this panel at all. It's disappointing that we still have to discuss the challenges that women have to face in this environment. And so my question to you is more or less the same. How do we encourage the next generation to not see it as a challenge that they have to fight through, but that is enjoyable, that is something that is rewarding, that is something that they can succeed in uh, because of the environment that has been created by you all? The importance of, you know, early childhood education, elementary school, it's, I can't stress this enough. 
Um, I, I was 17 years in education, so education is my passion. Um, we were creating student information systems and learning management systems. And the one predictor of success that we were always going back is the third grade reading level. If you're meeting standards at third grade, your chance of graduating from high school and pro progressing is very high. So you have, we start uh, losing people really early. Um, those are things I call the leaky pipelines, right? So by the age of 12, girls are starting to say, oh my God, I'm not, not, I'm not good at math, you know? And even though my daughter is in an extended match, she, she says she's not good at math. And my son, who is putting a lot less effort than hers, like, I'm the best. <laughs> so you see uh, this difference. And you have to encourage this self-confidence um, in uh, at this age, around 11, 12. Um, I encourage uh, them to stay in math and to enhance their writing ability. So mathematics and writing for me are the two key skills that we need to try to keep girls in those formative years um, in the junior high years. That's my opinion. And, and once they get the confidence of going through their pre-algebra, geometry, just understanding conceptual thinking, understanding how to um, build a hypothesis and prove something, I think it gets easier. Uh, but if you lose them in, in the junior high school and late elementary school, it's, it's harder to recover afterwards. Sure. And I know it's a very different viewpoint. You probably expected something different, but um, this is just something that I've been thinking for a long time. Yeah, no, and I think that's a very, that's a, a very astute point that you just made there. The difference between boys and girls starts so young and it's not necessarily from them, it's from society. And we teach them that, you know, you should be this or you should be this. And so most certainly it starts at home.